Ecclesiastes chapter 2. I said in my heart, Go to now, I will prove thee with mirth, social uh, merriment. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. Behold, this is very... Isn't it great how we open up this, this book right around this time of the year? Merriment, decking around the tree, eating all you can to your fat. It's a great time that God has started us on this book at Ecclesiastes. I said to laughter. How many people were laughing? Good old time around the table. It is mad. And of mirth, the merrymaking, the socialness. What doeth it? What is the end result? A lot of the gifts went back today. Head back to work Monday morning. What's it going to do for you? You're going to avoid the, 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 the mail. Wait till, you see, wait till you get your electric bill. Wait till you get your gas bill from the extra cooking on the stove. Remember I said yesterday in chapter 1, what if somebody called upon the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior? Oh, that that would be glory. That's the mirth. That's the laughter. That's the greatness. That's the wonder. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. My birth date was December 25th, and all heaven December 25th is, yeah, that's just any other day. But thank God the angels in heaven rejoice at one sinner. But what is the laughter? It's mad. You know, people laugh at some of the grossest things. You were to hear some of these comedians and what people laugh at. You know, it's one of the hard things that human beings, one of the things is that we laugh at is that people's misery. That's mad. Somebody trips and falls and we giggle. I sought in my heart to give myself. Notice in chapter 2, verses 1, all the way down to 11. But especially when we get to verse 4 to 11. Notice the eyes, means, the selfishness. Now remember, Solomon is writing the philosophy of God and the Word. Where philosophers take out God and the Word. So Solomon is doing philosophy in the right way. Yet you don't hear about uh, Ecclesiastes in, in the, in the uh, college. You don't see this book in the psychiatrist's office. I saw it in my heart to get myself onto wine. Ooh, a lot of people want that one. We want wine. Surprised I haven't ever heard a drunk quote that verse. Solomon salt wine. Yet equating my heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was the good for the sons of men which they shall do under the heaven all the days of their life. See, remember I told you, Solomon is looking at from, from the birth to death. The first breath of life to the last breath of death. What is it all about? And by the time you get to the near end of this chapter, you want to pull a gun out and shoot yourself. <coughs> there we go. I made me great works. And they're all plural. I made, I, me, great, works, I, build it, me, houses, 1 Kings chapter 7, 2 Chronicles 8, 3 through 6, he made himself houses, I planted, me, vineyards, I made, me, gardens, and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. Solomon 5, 11, 6, 2, 
verse 11. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees, the orchards and the gardens that we just read about. He had to bring his own water down. He's talented. He knows a lot. You want to talk about someone educated. And I guarantee Solomon did not have degrees on his wall. And yet, if he were to come in America, a man like this of the Bible of God, and walks up, and we won't hire you. Why not? Because you ain't got a piece of paper. Um, I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. First Chronicles 27, 24. I gathered me also silver and gold and the particular treasure of kings and of all provinces. Not common only for royalty. He said he built a throne of ivory and then overlaid it with gold. He said it had uh, six or seven steps with with lions on it. This guy had it all. I got me men singers and women singers. He didn't get a record player. He didn't get a tape deck. He got the band. He paid for an orchestra. He paid for singers. Never mind having a radio dial. He had it live. How much would that cost? And the delights of the sons of men as musical, musical instruments and that of all sorts. Wow, you talk about a guy here. He owned his own his record studio. Live. If it wasn't that, what was it? Memorex. Is it live or something like that? He also had the instruments for all of them. Who can say that today? Who in their vast kingdom doesn't call up a CD but picks up the phone and says, I want some music. Bring all the men and women with all their instruments in, the, in this room in, in five minutes. Who could say that? Say 30 minutes. Or an hour. Two hours. Who in this world could say that and bring everybody, man and female, and, and play before them? Solomon did. So I was great. Oh, look at that. Like your athletes are, me the greatest, me number one, <laughs> number one, <laughs> I'm the best. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me. David, Saul, <clears throat> in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. He didn't lose his mind. And with this book, he didn't lose God. There are people, there are young women who are dead now. And if they are in heaven from a Baptist church, they have no crowns because they gave it all to the world and Satan. Now later on, Solomon gives out to Satan with his wives. But this book is written with all the worldly stuff that God said, go ahead and do it. And do it in me. Write to the numbskulls of the world of the wisdom knowledge that I have given you. You do it. And show them and tell them, and I'll record by my Holy Spirit.
Christian, you have no business going out in the world saying, I need to live it. It's recorded in the Bible that someone has already lived it for you. And when we finish this book, and the last two or three verses, all right, the key for you to go run out there and swim in the sewer to see what the sewer is like. And yet, it's one of the 66 books of the Bible. And how unoffen this book, you hear a preacher say, open your Bibles to Ecclesiastes, chapter, verse number. And yet there is no spiritualism in this book. It is all what a man sees with his eyes from birth to the grave. His death. Not even the grave. I should stop saying it. It's the last breath of eyes that close to death. Not the grave. Death. Look at everything he got here. He got it all. Well, I don't have a car for every day of the week. I don't. Listen, if he can afford all this stuff, he can afford all the camels and asses and horses. Matter of fact, the Bible records he went down to Egypt to get horses in violation of the law. He had all over the land stalls built specially for his horses. Whatever the cataract of horses are, he had them. He had the Arabians. He had the Egyptians. He, I don't know what other horses there are, but the, you talk about the top best horses. You talk about the Clydesdale horse. Never mind the Clydesdale horses. He also had the booze to go with it. And some numbskull will end up with a broken life underneath a bridge with no life. And the conclusion of this book is to serve God. How many Christians have ventured themselves to go live in the world, forget this book, and destroy their lives? And it's all in the book. Verse 10. Whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, and my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Do you know God gave Solomon two times in his life a blank check? When Solomon prayed at the dedication of the temple, God gave him anything you want. Lord, I want wisdom to, to serve you and your people. I like that. I'm going to grant that to you. I'm going to give you riches. I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you all. And then God turns around and says, okay, buddy, in the Holy Spirit, Upon you, go do it all. You know, he had the sense that he never committed adultery. He never murdered anybody. He did everything he could within the law. And never broke the law as far as any sins that would be upon him that where he would die and go to hell for all eternity. He drank. He he had music. He had the gardens. He had landscape. He had uh, acreage. He had the wives. He had the houses. He had the gold. He had horses. He had it all. A blank check. If he wanted special spice that was only found in China at that, you know how long it would take that back then to go from 
Israel to China. He was saying, go over there and get it. By the way, I'm interested in a couple Oriental women. Bring a couple Oriental women to be my wives while you're at it. He sent his 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 navy out to bring peacocks and apes, the Bible records. Why? Because he wanted them. He had some kind, if you read the Bible, he had a zoo, something like a zoo in Israel. Because they would bring peacocks and apes. How many of you out there own a zoo? How many of you ever got 100% of your Christmas list this year? Solomon did. This is a great book to be talking about this guy. He got it all. When he came out of his bedchamber December 25th that morning, he, the whole thing was there that he wanted. Everything checked off on his Christmas list. Got it. What he said, verse 10, And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. Have you read the last chapter, the last uh, three verses of this book? The philosophy of God. 37 verses of vanity and vanities. Of all that Solomon got, on December 26, 2014, what is he enjoying today? A thousand wives. Which one is he? Which which one is he holding hands with right now? All the horses. Which one is he riding? You know the pharaohs of Egypt buried everything they had with the pharaohs. So in the afterlife, they can enjoy everything that they had. You know where the pharaoh stuff are? They are in museums. They are in basements. They are in robbers' houses. They are in private collections. If that tells you enough that you cannot enjoy it in the afterlife, why are so many people searching and working to get it all when they're going to die? And one of the books in your Bible, the 66 books, we will read again, All is Vanity. As far as from birth to your death. You give your wife and your children all the love you, you do, you give. And you close your eyes of death. On this planet Earth, on this life, what? Well, we know if we serve the Lord and, and do for the Lord Jesus Christ as servants of the Lord, as a family, we'll get crowns. But what does Solomon know about that? He doesn't know anything about heaven and all. He doesn't know anything about Abraham's bosom. We don't learn about that when Jesus shows up. And when you read the Old Testament and you read what they're doing, don't you see they don't have no glimpse? They know about a Shiloh, a hell. They are not guaranteed a, a satisfaction of knowing eternal security as we do. Then I looked upon all the works that my hands have wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. From the sun coming up to the sun going down. So what? 
Trees died in that orchard. <coughs> Some trees never gave any fruit. All those men, all those men and women singers, not all of them sang from my, from their heart. Some sang just for the money. Some sang because they had to. All the pleasures, well, all those headaches I had from the drunkenness. Oh yeah, that was a pleasure. And I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness. And folly. For what can the man do that cometh after the king? Even that which has been done already. What will happen? Okay, I'm the king. What about the common man? He can't do as much as I do. I'm someone of importance. Whoopie do. What did that do for somebody? Oh, so all the fun that I do, what about the person that was involved? What if he called these singers, or, or, or the singers, or what do we call the, the singers, the women, and the men? What if he called them at 3 o'clock in the morning because he couldn't sleep? Well, now they can't sleep. So my pleasure, my joy in life may be at the cost of somebody else's. Oh, I've got all this money from my corporation, but how many people are, are starving or, dis, or, or trying to survive that you're underpaying so you can have all that money and your pleasures? And are you really happy? Then I saw that wisdom excelled, excelleth folly, as far as light excelleth darkness. 1 Corinthians 1.21 Wisdom is not the answer. So I know it all. Big deal. I'm going to go to the same place a, a poor man goes. The grave. So what? Remember from birth to death. We're not talking about an afterlife. We're talking about we all, we all go to the grave. There is no resurrection. There is no gospel to Lord Jesus Christ. The wise man's eyes are in his head. Proverbs 17, 24. And it's proper. That's where your eyes belong. But the fool walketh in darkness. He has no eyes. He's blind. 1 Peter 2 7, Proverbs 17 24, and 4 19. Yeah, okay, I'm a wise man. My eyes are where they are. I can see. But a fool walketh in darkness. He's blind. And I myself precede also that one event happens to them all. Psalm 4 5 through 14. Death. What did I have all this party for? What did I have all this mirth for? Why did I raise up my credit card? I'm going to die. That sucks. <laughs> so I'm insane. We're going to see that in a minute. <clears throat> then I said in my heart, as it happens to a fool, so it happens even to me. Death. And why was I then more wise? Wisdom does not save you from death. Wisdom does not give you salvation, Solomon just told you. The wisest men will be in hell.
So if you think education can save you, you need to speak to Solomon. Then I said in my heart, or the heart man believes unto righteousness, get that. Cross-reference that with Romans 10, 9, and 10. This, I mean, excuse me, that, this also is vanity. What? Man's wisdom. Not going to get me anywhere. I can make it at the top of the biggest corporation that Solomon had in his day. He did as the king of all Israel, the smartest king of all Israel. What? He died. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than the fool forever. Eventually, as the Lord tarries, Go to a cemetery and walk around, and one day even you have relatives, and find their grave, and you're going to remember grandma, grandpa, dad, mom, brother, sister, whoever. You're going to remember them. But walk to the, walk from the from that part of the cemetery to that which is the oldest section, and realize as you're walking along there, people who are buried are not getting visited as often as they would, if not ever being visited again. And as you get to the oldest section of the cemetery, there are people who don't even know that they're buried there. Who never met them. Oh, they may have heard their names in a family Bible or family story, but they've never been met and they are forgotten. And there is a possibility that, oh, I'll never forget you. You might. Life may go so on that you may forget. Maybe a disease or something will attack your brain. So you may forget. We raised George Washington up, and he was our first president. Give me, a, give me the name of all the men that were with him in the boat when he crossed the Potomac River that night. Give me all their names. Who were the names of the men that worked on the noses of the presidents on Mount Rushmore? Give me those names. Give me the names of the men that worked on the Pony Express. Give me the names of the Indians that met the Europeans here in Florida when the Europeans came. See? You don't know. Alright, if you can find that Indian name. Oh, good. Whatever his name is. What's the name of his wife? What's the name of his children? Who was the tribe idiot? Who was the hunter that brought the food into the tribe? You see what I'm saying? People who die will be forgotten on this earth. You're not so important. And we're going to remember you for all eternity. See, there are some people who think, oh, when they die, you know, no, it don't work so. Seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man? As the fool. What? Heart attack? Get hit by a camel? Stress? Natural causes? Listen, they dug up uh, whatever you're doing. Egyptian mummies, women who who had breast cancer. See, cancer is nothing new. AIDS. This is the first minute. There's always been sexual diseases.
How many people of great authority and how many scum of the earth died in the Black Plague that ran through Europe? You would have a medical doctor of his time taking care of a patient and both of them would die at the same time. Therefore, I hated life. The substance. Life sucked. You're going to bury me in the same dirt you're going to bury a bum. That's life in general, as Solomon's writing. You know what your life is without Christ? It sucks. You've got to pay for everything. Nothing is free. And if you got it free, somebody else paid for it. You breathe the same air a pig breathes. You occupy the same space as a... As a uh, Adulterer, you breathe the same air as a pedophile. You breathe the air of someone who has passed gas. You have breathed the air that someone has taken their last breath. And what is it without God? Death. It's all vanity. You know, if you get saved and you have the opportunity only to pass out one gospel tract, that's better than none. You know what God allowed that thief on the cross that got saved to do before he died? God gave him the opportunity to witness to the other thief. What did the other thief die for? Vanity. Everything that that dying, unrepented thief, he went to hell. That repentant thief, man, I, we don't know what his condition was like in, in Abraham's bosom, but uh, anticipation, here he comes. And if he had any voice, which we don't know, can you imagine down in, in, in Abraham's bosom, in, I don't know, but he's just jumping down, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, folks, come on, he's coming, he's coming, coming, coming. Who? Jesus. Who? The Messiah. If that was possible, do you realize Abraham's bosom, they were all anxiously waiting because of one man? I don't know. That may not have happened. But what was life for that repentant thief? It was Jesus Christ. The hope. What was it for that dying thief? Nothing. Where did all the things that he stolen gone? Who knows? What happened to the temple? 70 AD was destroyed. What happened to the palaces of the high priest? They're gone. You know what I mean? I hated life because the work that was wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. See, he has done nothing in chapter 2 for God. He's done it all for self. What glory did God get out of this so far? Nothing. And yet, but he's right in a philosophy without God, for God. For those who want to live without God. Try to explain that one. 
That's right up there with the Trinity. He's writing without God, for God, God being in him, but there's no God in chapter 2 of everything he's done. This is America, chapter 2. We've got trees. we got music. We don't give it to God. Imagine putting Christ in Christmas after all the garbage music I've heard. Yea, I hated all my labor which I have taken under the sun. Because I should leave it unto the man that should be after me. Inheritance. Rehoboam. Did you know what Rehoboam did to Israel after he became king? He broke the nation into two for all to today. Israel, too, has never gotten back to one yet. And who knows whether he, any of your children that you leave inheritance to, but here would be Rehoboam, should be a wise man or a fool. He was a fool. Solomon had a little inclination about his son. Yet shall he have rule over all my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. I built this temple. I built all these houses. I built all these, these gardens and all these pools of water and all these trees and orchards and Got all these things. And you know what? I just may leave it to a big dummy. Why? If you were to go over Israel today, you think you would see the splendor that Solomon had? They said there was gold and silver as rocks. You wouldn't find that today. If Solomon could be reincarnated or re resurrected, whatever the word, to come back to Israel, which he can't, but if he were to be transported to Israel for five minutes, you realize he would be in tears and agony to see what Israel, Jerusalem is like today? Can you imagine the splendor of God and looking at the dumb of the rock? What would he think? Of everything that he had, he had done under the sun and what's going on now under the sun over there today. What glory is God getting over Jerusalem today? But what glory do we know will happen in Jerusalem one day? See, we have what Solomon doesn't have. We have the complete word of God in our hands. We know. We know what Solomon didn't know. Doesn't Hebrews say they saw a city and maker that was God and they had not attained it? We know where that's coming from. We know that's the new earth. Abraham doesn't know that or didn't know that. Isaac didn't know that. Jacob didn't know that. Solomon didn't know that. Daniel didn't know that. Isaiah wrote about it. But did he know? Truly? Understand? In his 66th chapter, he talks about a new heaven and new earth. Does he really know? We do. Therefore I went about to cause my heart to despire, despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. Pessimism. For there is a man whose labor is in wisdom and in knowledge and in equity. Yet to a man, all right, the first man is Solomon, the second man is his son. That has not labored therein, shall he leave it for his portion? 
This is also vanity and great evil. Ooh ooh. Ooh ooh. I labored for all this. I worked hard for all this. And I'm going to leave it to somebody else who did not labor for it. And I can't take it with me to the grave. That's what he's saying. Why isn't this passage read at a funeral? It irks me that this world wants you to speak nice at funerals. You can't say who the person really is was in life. I have a, a strong conclusion in my life that my grandma was not saved and probably in hell today. And I, I spoke the truth and I got the whole family mad at me. I witnessed to her and she outright rejected me. Never once did she proclaim Jesus Christ as her Savior. Based upon those conclusions, I believe she's in hell. That's a Bible stated fact. Unless she is called out and believed the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior, then she's saved. If she is not, which she is never with us, has said anything. Now she may have. Before she died, she may have. I don't know. But based upon what I have witnessing with her. See, that's the truth. We can't speak to, oh, how nice to, no! Solomon spoke the truth. I did all this work, and I'm going to leave it to maybe an idiot, a fool. And judging by Rehoboam and his activity, Solomon had a good idea what that boy was like. Remember Proverbs we read? Three quarters of the book was written to his son, my son, my son, my son. And he never adhered to the Proverbs. <coughs> For what has man of all his labor and of the vexation of his heart, wherein he hath, he hath labored under the sun? Now, for the Christian, you know, you get crowns and rewards. You get Christ. Well, well if, if, you, if you don't deny Christ, he won't deny you before God and the angels. You know that. If you suffer with him, you shall reign with him. You know that. Solomon don't. Where's all this labor Solomon saying? What do I get from it? And then turn it over to somebody who I don't even know what's going to do. For all his days are sorrows, taken not in rest in the night. He's not sleeping. This is also vanity. Fatalism. Epicureanism. There is nothing better for a man... Now, 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 be careful. Don't you just go run to the Bible and take a verse. You haven't finished the book. You didn't read the last chapter. You didn't la read the last three verses. You don't understand that Psalm is writing as a worldly view before you go on with this verse and make a doctrine. Now let's finish it. That he should eat and drink. And he, and that he should make his soul enjoy good of his labor. Don't you go run into that verse. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. See? God will make me eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah. But what is the conclusion? That's what we haven't got to yet. That's ten more chapters. 
Do you know that you'll that all men saved or lost will stand before God and have to give an account of what you've done? Do you know that? Deuteronomy 14, 26, James 1, 17. Egotism. For who can eat? Or who else can hasten here into more than I? Pragmat pragmatism. P-R-A-G-M-A-T-I-S-I-M. For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Well, I've got it all because God's blessing me. You don't have it all because you're, God's angry with you. Do you know who held that philosophy? The religious men of Jesus. He's sitting with the publicans and sinners. Ew, wash my hands. Excuse me, Simon. Yes, Lord. If, 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 if a guy ha has one or two things and be forgiven, and this other person has multi to be forgiven, who would be thankful the most? Well, to him that, that forgave us the most. Yeah, you, you know, you didn't kiss my feet. You didn't welcome me in the house. And this woman has been... And she loves me. You just may be having me in the house for the first time. I said, well, I don't know. You see how people will run to places in the Bible and grab a verse and, and put it on a, on, a, on a sampler and put a frame on it and put it on it. Hey, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And you don't even know what the context of that verse is. Really? All right. I can do all things through Christ with faith. Let's go on the on the uh, the Oakland, California bridge over there. I can fly as I jump off this bridge. Well, wait a minute. No, that's you. No, no. I can do all things through Christ with strength is me. And what is your life? My life was eat, be eat, drink, and be merry. It's in the Bible, God. Ha ha. Yeah, let's take the contents. Well, my Bible said that you weren't God. Ha ha! Let's take the contents. Well, God, you saved a man by telling him not to eat certain things. Ha ha! Let's take in contents. See, you know what the danger of taking a verse out of the Bible and starting a religion or basing whatever you believe on upon that? Damnation. Condemnation. A great rebuke by God. And uh, Proverbs chapter 30, and you be found a liar. See, you can't take this verse and let's eat and, and drink. Well, Solomon, look at that. He asked for wine. I want wine. You haven't finished the book. Judge not, least you be judged. You didn't finish. The Lord's Prayer. No, you're a liar. Read the contents. He's talking to the disciples. The disciples asked him a question. That's the disciples' prayer. You know, these occults and religions use the Bible. Yes, they do. But they take it out of context. Here, this is fear far fall from. Here's Jesus' body. But yet, you, you didn't read the Bible where it said in John chapter 6, the flesh profited nothing. You didn't read that. You didn't read the context. They've been talking about physical bread the entire time. They went to he was feeding them bread and fish to the manna. So he's talking about he's the real bread. And now you got a hocus pocus magic, magic show. They say, here he is.
And the main subject of this book it is all this vanity as far as you look at life itself from being born to your last breath. Inheritance. Making all you can for life and you do it without God. When you live life without God, it's vanity. That is the subject of the book. Now the philosophy that Solomon is using, he is writing of God. As a man who's going for the gusto. Without God. See, he didn't pray for his son. The man of the uh, Ecclesiastes. Yeah, He's not praying for his son. Now, I'm not saying Solomon didn't pray for his son. I'm saying the man of this book didn't pray for his son for, for wisdom that God has passed on to him. And one day, uh, as a father, I'm going to die. And I don't know, who am I going to hand this stuff over to? What is this person? See, I've been so interested in getting life. I've been so interested going for the gusto and going for the wine, going for everything. I didn't train my child up. That's what it's saying. Solomon says you did it without God. What is going to be the outcome? A godless life. Now, I, am not, I do not recommend music, worldly music. But there is a ballad that you can find, The Cat's in the Cradle. You get the words to that, and you read the words of a father who was too busy to raise his child, had nothing to do with his child because he's earning a living too much, and that boy grows up and doesn't have time for his father and doesn't have time for his own child based upon what the father taught him. And that's what you see as we're studying this book. We're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving without God. And the whole time you're in neutral. And you don't go nowhere. And if you're a Christian and you do that, you will get no rewards in heaven. You'll get no inheritance with the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be in heaven. You'll be in New Jerusalem without the joy. If you are a lost man, your life will end up eternity in the lake of fire. Because you have not believed on the name that God has proclaimed whereby all men must be saved. John writes, love not the world. Here's a man that loves the world and going after it. And he doesn't even know what his children are going to do. And in the conclusion he comes again, all is vanity. <laughs>